Hey guys, how's it going? It's John from The Machine Shop. Today's video, I'm going to show you all about DMMs, or Digital Multimeters. Some of the common features that are between different handheld style ones. I've also got a circuit here which I'm trying to build, so I'm going to be using a DMM to analyze that circuit and make sure it's all fully working. You ready? Let's go! Okay, so DMMs, or Digital Multimeters, are tools that we can use to measure voltages of different kinds. So the digital part comes from the fact that these things have got digital displays. You can see that they've got little LCD displays on them. Uh, the multimeter is because they're capable of measuring several different types of electrical circuits and electrical signals. Um, there's two different types. So this one is a manual ranging DMM and this one is an auto ranging DMM. When it's manual, it basically means that you need to select the range that you're going to be looking at. So here, if you're looking at voltages, you can measure uh, depending on where you select it, up to 200 millivolts or up to 20 volts or up to 500 volts. It may even be if you're measuring resistance, like it's got down here, it's got 200 ohms or 20,000 ohms or 2 mega ohms. So you need to choose your range accordingly. So you just measure it up to that point. Obviously, you're measuring something which is 5 volts. You won't really want it in the 500 volt range because you won't get the accuracy. But if you're measuring something which is 110 volts, for example, you might want it in the 200 volt range because uh, it's going to be too much for the 20 volt range. Um, auto ranging DMM means that it does all that for you. You just say what style of signal you're going to be measuring. So let's have a look at this DMM in a bit more detail. So as we can see, if I just turn it on, um, this is the Fluke 175. I'll leave a link in the description of if you want to buy one of these specifically. Um, so we can measure voltages, we can measure uh, resistance, we can make, do continuity testing, and we can do current. There's also some extra ones around the side here. So here we can also measure capacitance, we can test diodes, and we can also uh, measure our current and switch between AC or DC. Now DMMs... Uh, we'll need uh, some leads. So I've got some just generic leads here that you'd use for any sort of DMM. Uh, you can see they've got several connectors on the bottom, quite common as well. Uh, they normally have a common, common, a voltage, voltage, and a current. So this one is this top one, this current one here. This one's actually got two uh, for measuring different currents. So here I'm gonna plug in my black into my common, and I'm gonna plug my red into my voltage one there. Okay, now I mentioned that this one's got a continuity feature, which is this one here. That basically means that it tests to see if there's a connection between two points. So if I get my pros and I touch them together, it makes a nice audible sound to tell me that there is a connection between the two. And it even shows me in ohms on the reading what that uh, difference is. Okay, so here I've just got a generic test cable and I want to test to make sure that this cable is working. I'm going to plug my test probes into it. Now luckily, uh, these just plug straight into these connectors. So, there we go. Yep, nice annoying beep noise so that I know that that cable is definitely working. Excellent, so that cable is a good one. Now on your scope probes, you can add some extra features. In fact, these have already got one on there. Uh, the cable is actually just this part. It's got a shrouded connector, so I can't accidentally touch it. And I can plug it into the back of here. And now I've got some nice beefy things to hold on to with some finger guards on there as well for touching uh, electronics. And obviously, if I'm touching high voltage electronics, I need to be super careful about touching them. You could also get things like these uh, sharper probes. There we go, so you can plug that in, it gives you a much sharper point. That's really good if you're trying to get onto a circuit and you're trying to touch something which is very, very small. Ideal for that sort of thing. Comes with a little plastic thing to stop you stabbing yourself. Uh, you could also add things like these crocodile clips. You can put them on the end and that allows you to grab hold of things, right? So you can so you can grab hold of things that's got little yum yum gnashes on the end. Excellent. Okay, so let's say, for example, we want to measure some voltage, okay? So I'm going to put it on my voltage. It's got the lines here. That's for DC voltage. So let's try testing something like uh, I've got a battery here, okay? Now I want to know if this battery is charged up. It says that this battery runs at 7.2 volts. Let's test that. So I'm going to line up my colors here. I've got black to go to black. Always plug in that one first. And then I'm going to use my red here. If I accidentally touch this, it doesn't really matter at the moment because uh, there's no difference in voltage between the ends of my scope probes. But if I actually touch the contact on the battery, there we go, it's showing 7.45 volts. So I know that this battery is fully charged. Perfect, I can stick that into my remote control car, or whatever that's for. Great, so let's have it a slightly more advanced circuit. 
Okay, so here we go. I've got a little circuit here. This takes uh, AC power in from the mains. I've got a transformer to step it down, and then it goes through a full bridge rectifier, and then I've got a regulator here to get it down to uh, about 5 volts, and then powering up this motor that I've got here with a little disc on there. Okay, now there's a couple more components that I need for this. So I need a capacitor and I need to add another diode to it. Okay, now I better check to make sure these components are working. So on my DMM here, I'm going to change it to the capacitor mode. I'm going to turn that on. Okay, now I'm going to test my capacitor here. So this should be around 100 microfarads. Uh, 96.5 microfarads. Perfect, that'll do. Excellent. Uh, now I want to also test my diode here. So I'm going to put it into diode mode. Okay, now my diode, uh, if I turn it around one way, it should be short circuit, and if I turn it around the other, then it should be uh, about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volts. Now I need to make sure I'm reading the right thing here, it's showing resistance, and on continuity, I'm going to press my button, put it in diode mode, there we go. Okay, now I want to be careful that I don't touch both sides of this diode, or it's going to affect my reading. So I'm going to go across there, okay, that's showing open circuit, and if I turn it around the other way, it should, yeah, there we go, 0 0.6 volts, excellent, so I know my diode's working. Right, so let's get these components into my circuit. Uh, this one goes here, and this one goes in, where's my negative, there, that one goes between there and that point there. There we go. Okay, so I've got my circuit in place. Okay, let's power up my circuit and make sure it's all working. Excellent, okay, that looks good, my motor's spinning. Lovely, excellent. Right, let's check some voltages. So, I'm going to check a DC voltage first. So I want to check to make sure that my output is giving me what I'm thinking. So, let's put that on there. It should be about 4 to 5 volts. 4.6 volts, excellent. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I want to check my power coming in. So I'm going to put it on AC. Okay, and that's going to go between this point here and this point over here. Uh, 8.64 volts AC, perfect, yeah, that looks really good. Now I want to check to make sure, I want to do some tests around the current that's being used around my circuit. So I'm just going to turn the power off, and I'm going to rewire this so that I can get to, the, um, to measure some current. So I'm going to add some extra wires in here to interrupt my power, so that I can measure how much power is going through. Okay, that goes into there, I'm going to put another wire into there. Uh, I'm going to use my little crocodile clip again. That's going into there, and I'm going to attach that onto here. Okay, now all I need to do is touch the left hand side of this little connector here, and that would recreate my circuit. Now, let's get my DBM set up and uh, put it into current. It's reminded me that I need to change my lead, so I need to take out this one and put it into my current position. Uh, it's in AC mode at the moment. I need it in DC for this circuit, so press that DC mode. There we go. Okay, let me turn the power back on. There we go. And I want to touch this left hand side of this connector. Great. Okay, so it's showing that when my motor is spinning, it's about 160 milliamps. Perfect. Now I want to test it to see um, how, what, how much current it's using when it's under stress. So I'm going to put that back on there. And my DVM's got this min max button. So if I press that, that doesn't appear on all DVMs, it's just because this one's kind of a posh one. Okay, now I'm going to put some stress on my motor. Great, okay, so the maximum current that I got was 365 milliamps. Crack it, okay, so as long as my circuit can maintain that amount of power to that motor, then I know that's going to keep working. Uh, I want to also check the input current as well, so let's just do that. I'm going to take these cables off. Oh, excellent, better turn the power off. <laughs> okay, so let me just take off this cable. I need to interrupt it to be able to measure current, so I'm going to put this wire into here, like that, let's get rid of that one. Okay, I'm actually going to put the other crocodile clip on my other probe here, and let's connect these up. So I need to put this probe into here, and I'm going to put this probe into here, like so, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to clear my screen. Okay, now I need to make sure that this is currently in DC mode. I need to change that to AC current. Excellent. And I'm going to plug that back in. Great, so that's all running. So the AC side of my circuit is showing about 220, 217 milliamps. 
So again, I want to stress to see how much current is going to go through here at maximum. So I'm going to hit my maximum button, and I'm going to hit this. So about 464 milliamps maximum when my motor is under stress. Perfect. So there we go, we've done some analysis on our circuit. Brilliant. So we just used a DMM pretty much to its full potential to be able to fully test our little circuit there. So we know that everything's working and we could even measure some currents that are going around our circuit. So there we go. There's a really good example of how you can use a DMM for testing your circuits. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. My name is John from The Machine Shop. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Machine Shop UK. Also visit our website, themachineshop.uk, where you can find our online store, where we've actually got some of these available to buy. And you can see links to all of our other videos as well. Cool. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.